Hi everyone. So my name is Shashwata Sivakandan and I'm a second year MBBS student who is here today to discuss an important topic in the subject of pathology. So before we begin, let's look at a simple case. So in this case, we can see a 65 year old woman comes to the clinic having a past history of diabetes, hypertension and smoking. A few weeks ago, she comes with the complaint of tightness in her chest. She's also someone who doesn't do much exercise. So based on all these clinical findings, we can come to the diagnosis that she suffers from atherosclerosis. So my aim here today is to give a short video discussing the many important risk factors, pathogenesis of atherosclerosis in a fun and simple manner. Let's begin. To make it even more simpler, the word atherosclerosis is divided into two parts. First is atheroma, athero, which denotes the porridge lipid lesion found in the center of an atheroma. Second is sterosis, which denotes the hardening of the arteries it causes. Now we'll see the definition in more depth. So atherosclerosis is defined as a thickening and hardening of muscular arteries mainly involving the tunica intima seen here and it is characterized by the presence of a fibrofatty plaque which is seen in this diagram. It can cause many clinical symptoms by causing ischemia. For example, atherosclerosis can cause angina which was the tightness in the chest which was a complaint that the lady gave in the case we discussed earlier. Factors such as peripheral vascular diseases and cerebral infarcts are also common. Now we'll discuss the different risk factors and etiologies leading to atherosclerosis. There are non-modifiable risk factors such as age and gender. In gender, males, especially those above 40 years of age, have a higher risk of developing atherosclerosis than females. There are many controllable risk factors, factors which we can modify, such as poor diet, smoking, diabetes, and high cholesterol levels. Emerging risk factors which we see today are obesity, stress, and inactivity. Now let's see the pathogenesis of how these risk factors can lead to the development of these plaques and the causation of these diseases. This is described by two theories the reaction to injury hypothesis and the monoclonal theory. Let's begin. So basically in the reaction to injury hypothesis, in the beginning there's endothelial injury, as you see here, due to many factors such as hypertension causing hemodynamic stress and chronic dyslipidemia, which causes increased vascular permeability. This endothelial injury causes platelet addition and monocyte migration, which is seen here. There's also release like factors like interleukin-1, which causes smooth muscle cells proliferation in the intima, and factors such as platelet-derived growth factor, which causes migration of smooth muscle cells from the media. And also, this is a diagram which shows the complete smooth muscle cell proliferation of the intima. This can result in the thickening of the wall, which, which complies with the definition we saw earlier. Now we'll see the role of monocytes. So basically LDLs from the plasma, once they enter into the intima, they form oxidized LDL. This oxidized LDL has two functions. First, it is cytotoxic to the endothelium. And second, it attracts proliferates these monocytes. These monocytes get converted to macrophages having these scavenger receptors. So these oxidized LDL are taken up by these macrophages having scavenger receptors forming this very important foam cells. So now these foams, this is a small diagram describing a complete summary of the pathogenesis. Here you can see the smooth muscle cell migration, its proliferation, the entry of the monocytes, the, con of the ingestion of these macrophages buffed by, by the oxidized LDL, and the formation of small cells. We will now look at how atherosclerosis presents on gross and microscopically. For that, let's see the morphological features. Firstly, we'll discuss about fatty streaks. 
So basically, fatty streaks are lesions found in many major arteries such as aorta and are usually present in the first year of life. However, they disappear with progressing age. In gross, as you can see here, the slightly elevated and like beaded streaks which are seen over here. And microscopically, it is denoted with this black arrow and it consists of foam cells and smooth muscle cells containing weapons. Next, we have our gelatinous lesions, which are gray lesions found grossly. The third most important one is the atheromatous plaque. This is how an atherosclerotic plaque looks grossly. As you can see here, the luminal surface has a fibrous cap and the inner necrotic core has a porridge-like material mm -hmm which is seen earlier known as atheroma. Microscopically, it contains the same thing, the fibrous cap and a lipid-rich necrotic core. The fibrous cap is composed of smooth muscle cells, extracellular matrix, while the, it just below that there is a cellular area having smooth muscle cells, macrophages, and there's also the central lipid core consisting of foam cells, cholesterol crystals, and extracellular lipid. Now, if the atherosclerotic plaque has any super added pathological changes, there's the formation of a complicated plaque. The first thing we'll discuss is calcification. So basically, this causes the intima to crack like an eggshell, and this happens when the vessel is incised. This is denoted as a blue color seen here. It is a blue color found in the area of necrosis and it is seen in the intima. Next is ulceration. So basically the layers covering the atheroma over here, if there's like high hemodynamic stress or mechanical trauma, it can cause these layers to ulcerate, forming this ragged surface over here. And this ragged surface can have some of the lipid debris at its base. The next thing we'll discuss is thrombosis. So basically, the thrombosis can be superimposed, as seen over is superimposed, or it can be neural thrombosis. It occurs in areas of endothelial damage or any if there is any ulcerated plaque, as we've seen before. Next is hemorrhage. So basically, hemorrhage is from the rupture of the capillaries by these these blood vessels supplying the atheroma over here, or the blood can come from the vessels coming through these ulcerated surfaces over here. The final complicated plaque is the complicated lesion is aneurysm. So basically, atherosclerosis can cause secondary changes so in the media or adventitia. It can cause thinning of the media and fibrosis of adventitia. Stuff like this can cause abnormal dilation of the vessels resulting in the abdominal aortic aneurysm. So that's it. This is a short video discussing various important points of atherosclerosis in a fun way. I hope you were able to understand and this was productive to you. Thank you and have a very nice day.